Mel, why do you think that people are hesitant to automate? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's such a big question. Uh, it, so okay, I'm gonna I'll, I'll I'll give you my thoughts based on some observations I've made in my career. Um, it, it, there, you, you need these ingredients first of all to have a, uh, a in, an organization decide that they want to pursue automation. And, I, and some of the ones I see, like number one, is have a willingness to learn new things and to persevere. The grit that it takes to not just learn it but implement it and, and see it through. Um, the next thing I see is a, a willingness from the top down and the bottom up of the organization to do this. Now, notice I'm not really talking about an individual there. It's really an organizational thing, especially if uh, automation is going to be adopted as a standard practice within an organization. Y you need that support from the you know from the bottom up and the top down of you know of an org structure. So, uh, it, so if I start with l let's just say that willingness to learn new things. Uh, Actually, you know what? And that's going to take me to number three. Is is the grit in order to do that? Uh, I'm going to just say it up front. It's, it's the grit, and and why I say the grit is because it, it, automation is is program. And it's just like somebody writing code. Nobody writes perfect code the very first time. The other thing is that sometimes it takes eight hours to go implement something that could have been done in 15 minutes. Right. So let me start with the first one. I think the the first one that willingness to learn. If that willingness to learn isn't there. Uh, I think it's super problematic because you, 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 in some, in many, many cases, you know what needs to be automated, but the how of automating, in other words, like putting it together, is something that, that potentially could be a new skill. It's going to be a new muscle to develop. Uh, so, and then of course the next one is the top down, bottom up. I, I think the uh, if if the full organization isn't behind that and fully committed to doing that, you're going to get these pockets of of teams that, you know, maybe one does it one way, another one just, they, they call it automation, but it's not really automation. You, you, you're just going to get a lot of things in the organization that just, you know, the, the, the oars in the boat, so to speak, aren't all rowing in the same direction. And sometimes that can hurt because then, then it's easy to say, well, just dismiss automation because you know what, we tried everything and look what happened, right? Uh, so, and then of course the third is, is, um, is that that's all related to, Having that that grit and and being willing to try things over and over again. If it took a long time to do that, that's fine. But you know, some it's easy to say, look, it just it would, it would only take me 15, 10 minutes. I, I don't you know, like why am I doing this automation thing when I can just go over there and just do this thing, just get it out of the way, and I'm and I'm and I'm done with it. Of course, those fifteen minutes will add up over and over and over again, and eventually you're going to end up with that eight hours plus. You're going to end up something with you. You, you might have spent thirty or forty hours at the end, you know, at, at, in the span of a a year or what have you, doing repetitive work, and that's 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 uh, that's unfortunate because the machines should be doing repetitive work and people should be solving the problems. Uh, so uh, that's a thought. I know yeah. I, I kind of went a little bit overboard there with my three <laughs> things. What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with, I, I think I hear a lot of times people say, oh, it would have only taken me 15 minutes, but it might take me eight hours to code. But you also have to think about like, when you're relying on a person to do something, what if they're on PTO? That 15 minutes might be a day, two days, or however much time it takes for them to get back. Or even they're busy doing some sort of task, right? So 15 minutes might not be just 15 minutes. Um, but what I see a lot is that people, I think we touched upon it in a, a previous episode, people are afraid that automation means that their job is going to be gone because their job is going to get automated. But in reality, I think that companies just have so much more work to do than what they have staffed. So yeah, this part of your job might be automated, but then you'll be able to do better things. Maybe you can do more innovative things rather than, you know, doing the exact same thing over and over. I'm sure that there's a lot of things that people in their jobs say, hey, I wish I can do this, but I just don't have the time. And this might allow you to actually do that. But I think, you know, people are afraid, especially nowadays with the tech industry not being stable. They're just like, well, I need, I need to have my job and I need them to depend on me. And Automation doesn't mean your job is gone. And, you know, a lot, also, I, I do believe that some people don't, aren't quite comfortable with the whole development thing. And they think that, oh, that's just for developers. Well, we say, uh, 
we define that a developer is anybody who writes code to do something. It doesn't mean that they need to do that as their profession. And I think some folks thinks that, hey, I'm not a developer, I can't automate. Oh, you need to go hire somebody else to do it. But from a company perspective, they're like, well, that costs money. Those people won't know what to automate. They just know how to code. And that just becomes kind of like an issue. Um, but none of that has to happen. P anybody can be a developer and anybody can automate. Um, we've touched upon it in a previous episode. So there's a lot of low to no code, drag and drop. It doesn't have to be, you got to learn a coding language. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You, uh, I like that point that you brought up. Uh, it, it, does it mean that automation is going to replace what I do? And, and, and my, my view of that is. It, you have a choice. It, we all have choices, right? We, and one of those choices is become part of that. If you become part of it, that's that's the value. Knowing what it is that needs to be automated. If you're doing that over and over again, you know what needs to be automated. So become, that's the choice. Become part of the automation somehow. Uh, develop those skills. So it goes back to like the number one thing I was saying is like have that willingness to learn uh, new things. So if you have that willingness to learn new things, and then, then hopefully that will be that will serve you well in in going through uh, the learning process of learning the new tools to automate what it is you're doing. Now, what you what the what of what you're doing is is something that it, somebody else can figure out pretty quickly because they're solving that problem. They could figure that out, and then that can be automated, and then you're left out because then now you're you know, if I can put it bluntly, now you weren't part of that automation. So yeah, so I guess you're going to find something else to work on, perhaps. And maybe you'll have another opportunity to then automate that thing. But be part of that automation, be part of that problem solving piece uh, for the organization. That That's a very valid point. Because if you are part of the automation, now they rely on you to keep their automation going. And if you automated more than just what you were doing, then you still become somebody who's important and they need you because, you know, you always got to maintain it, right? You've got to maintain your automation code. Um, a lot of the times things change, you got to make adjustments. So they can't just say, bye, peace out, because somebody has to be able to maintain it. And if you wrote it, you're the best one to maintain it. And again, your job is still safe. Yeah. And, and you brought up another one. Uh, another good point that I like is the 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 whole notion of going on vacation and being being away from your desk if you if you automate a lot of those processes they hopefully are written in such a way that it's 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 reliable it it can be over and over again and 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 have that robustness such that you could be on a beach somewhere uh sipping something nice and enjoying the sun and your <laughs> vacation and your phone is not going to go off uh you could just do that comfortably yeah. And the other thing is, is here's here's another one that, that's sort of related to that. You can go on vacation, but one, one of the things I, I learned early in my career is make yourself promotable. You don't want to put yourself in a position in yeah. your career where, well, gee, you know, Mel's the only one that knows how to blank, 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 a manual process that, well, you know, somebody else could figure it out, but it would just take us a while to do that. So, so why not have automate that stuff away and make yourself promotable for the next position, the next thing. And before you know it, you're automating not only the process that you knew really well, but you're going to be automating some other process. And it just, it, it's a snowball effect. It just keeps going. Before you know it, you, you've you got your, you know, you've got your, your hands in all these different places, you know, the, or you've got your finger on the pulse at all these different places in the organization that you've automated. And before you know it, you become that much more valuable and therefore you've made yourself that much more eligible to be promoted. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, now a lot of the products have so many APIs available to automate and can bring more to the table than we did five, 10 years ago. So whatever manual process that was done is kind of, I wouldn't, I mean, kind of like, outdated but not in the way like it doesn't work it's just we gotta keep up with what's going on and um you know see what else was available 
what got added. Because if you're taking the same amount of time every single day doing the same manual process, you're probably not spending any time or don't have too much time to explore new things, to be able to see what else can be done, what more value can you bring to your company and what value can you add to it? And it goes back to being promotable, see what else you can bring to the table and to make your role just as important as it was when you're just manually doing something. Well, all good points, all those points point to a great uh, case for automation. The fear is real. You might not want to because of the reasons we outlined today, but I think there is a lot to consider and there's a lot of rewards that we've we've outlined as well is if if you do decide that you want to automate things and to be part of that automation and you'll see why there's so many reasons that will benefit you in the long run as well as the organization any final thoughts denise we have a lot of resources. We talk about automation, but we also provide a lot of resources on developer.cisco.com. If you're a network engineer, we have a lot of network programmability stuff and things to start you off. And a lot of the material is geared towards people who are starting. And so don't be fearful that all of our stuff is mostly like, oh, you already know what you're doing. No, we, we try to ease everybody in, hold their hand, and have a lot of self-paced tutorials to help you out. So if you are truly interested and want to try it out, you know, check out developer.cisco.com. We have a lot of resources for you. Great. All right. Well, thanks again for joining. This is the, this is the daily standup. We'll catch you in the next episode.